So Miyamoto wants Nintendo to be as big as Disney. Now tell us, if Mickey Mouse and Super Mario were running for president, who would you vote for? I'm Back Rolls. And I'm Mac Fraser, and we're the Nintendo Nerds. We're a comedy and gaming duo here to help you craft and play your way to a better day. We met in the not-too-distant past during some spirited online Mario Kart, and as it turns out, we share a love for art, gaming, and all things Nintendo. And we want to share our nerdy knowledge with you. So stick around, because in today's video, we're going to be talking about what's in the future for our favorite gaming company, Nintendo. Now, for those of you who haven't heard about this, Shigeru Miyamoto recently received the Person of Cultural Merit Award, and at the event in Japan, he made a couple of statements that really got us here at the Nintendo Nerds thinking, what is next for Nintendo? And that's why we're here to talk about it. Now, we didn't want to go too far down the rabbit hole, so we've separated our discussion into three separate parts. Switch hardware, next year's Switch software lineup, and then Nintendo's other ventures. So let's get started. All right, so Switch hardware. We just had the Switch Lite come out a couple of months ago. Yes, I actually have one now. Uh, my partner and I wanted to get one in leading up to the Pokemon Sword and Shield debut, and we decided to go for the special edition Pokemon Sword and Shield with the blue and magenta buttons, and it's a it's a real treat. I have to admit, we they're were, beautiful. It's and it and it feels great in the hand. If those of you out there are looking for a strictly handheld device it's wonderful i must say i i really must say that i'm happy with my original switch but my partner really loves the switch light and i'm a little bit envious of just how great it feels in the hands i'll be honest even just to look at like the the one thing about the regular switch is that i find that i have a bit of problems playing with it in handheld mode because it doesn't feel firm the joy cons don't seem to fit in there as tightly as i would like maybe it's just my switch model maybe it's all of them uh but the like the the switch light looks like a really solid piece of hardware it looks like it's very comfortable to hold but i gotta tell you i'm missing that like the, the ability to play on my tv i'm not i'm not so into that i play a lot more on my tv than i do in handheld Exactly, and so for those of you who know what you're looking for, and if you're looking for strictly handheld, it, it, it's a it's a highly recommended device from us. But it seems like we're probably about halfway through our Switch lifespan. The Nintendo has come out previously in statements saying that they would like for the Switch to last somewhere around six years. So in 2020, that will be entering year. Uh, kind of three and a half as we mm -hmm. are entering this current winter into spring. And I think it's been a tremendous year. And so it seems like full steam ahead. The, the Switch Lite is selling incredibly well. And I'm sure that the numbers will look great for the holiday season with Pokemon selling incredibly well. You know what? I definitely agree with you. I think that this year was a good Switch, a Switch year. I think there was a lot of games... Um, really for a broad audience of people. I'll tell you, there was actually quite a few games that I was certain day one, I'm going to pick this up. I ended up having to skip a couple of them because I just didn't have the time for it. Nor the budget. Uh, it was just kind of a dizzying array of titles. And we got a little spoiled this year. What seemed like it was going to be a pretty sparse year at the beginning was, was really, really cram-packed. So talking about Switch hardware specifically, uh, like we said we were going to, um... So we just had the Switch Lite. The rumor uh, through the internet right now is kind of that there is likely going to be a Pro model coming at some point. Uh, a lot of what I've read has kind of pointed to the fact that it might launch with Breath of the Wild 2, this piece of hardware being more specifically like a home console as we know it, rather than, you know, a hybrid home console slash handheld that you can kind of take anywhere. The opposite of what we received with the Switch Lite. Exactly. I gotta tell you, I have some opinions about this, like some good, some bad. The truth is, is that I have a really hard time wanting to double down and buy a console that I already have. But at the same time, if they're gonna give me like hardware that might be a little bit more powerful to run the games that I know and love, maybe even a little bit better, it is somewhat an enticing thought, but I just, I don't know if I'll spend the money for it if it happens. Well, you and I have speculated on this offline. I think both you and I would be really pleased to see if rather than an entire Switch overhaul, what we saw was a Pro Dock, something oh, that yes. let the Switch run at full capacity. Now, the older Switches would definitely become 
hot as a iron in the fire because they would really need to probably run at full steam, almost like when people undock them, them or unchain them themselves. I'm, I'm butchering whatever word is the proper term for letting the switch run at its full capacity. You know what they talk about that you read all over the internet that the the switch is running at only a percentage of what it's capable of, and that people are going out of their way to kind of overclock the system so that it can handle visuals a little bit better. Um, I've I've seen people do this. I've seen it on the internet. I'm going to say that I haven't really seen a big difference in that myself. But you know what? I'm sure if you're playing like on a really high quality TV, that it might make a difference. Um, one of the ideas that was kind of put forth to us by someone that we play video games with um, that really got us thinking about the Switch dock was a friend of ours, he had said that, you know, they should they should do a dock or one of the ways to get around releasing a whole new piece of hardware for a console that already exists is to release the Switch dock and add things like more RAM to it to give it the capability of doing more than it already does. And the thing is, I have to say, if they were to say, you know, I can have the, con I can use the console I've already got, but I can make it better by, you know what, maybe paying 150 bucks, something like that for a better dock. Sure, why not? I've been kind of thinking about getting a second dock anyways, just so I have a dock on both the TVs in my house. But at this moment in time, it's not that much of a need. I think that would be an incredibly smart business decision. In a house like mine, I can't really justify. We we bought the barest PlayStation that we could because we want to play the games. We're not really the kind of household that spends the money on a PlayStation Pro because there's no need for an entire another system in the house. But I could totally see myself switching out just the Switch dock. Absolutely. I think that is definitely a justifiable way for them to do things. And I would happily put my money towards that. For sure I would. Well, at first I gotta stop spending all my money on all the software they're providing, but we've certainly got some speculation to do on that as well. We're curious as to what 2020 will hold for software for the Switch. You know what, at this moment in time, like it, it seems like things are kind of light. Nintendo, these in these last couple of years, has really liked to keep us like waiting with breath that is baited. Um, they don't really like to put things too far in advance. Every time they do like a seasonal Nintendo Direct, they kind of only give us a window into the next couple of months so that we don't really know what's coming after that. And I don't know if that's to hide the fact that maybe there isn't a lot coming or they don't want to let us know about things until maybe they're a little bit closer to release so that, you know, you don't anticipate them for too long and then worry that they might get delayed. Because um, looking into 2020, like the only things that we can really think of right now the only thing with a firm release date is Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing's got a firm release date for March, and I think that we're going to hit that. But we've got some other games coming, like Metroid Prime 4 and Bayonetta 3, that we really haven't heard about in quite some time. Bayonetta 3 was shown at the Game Awards with that teaser trailer in 2017, and they quietly moved the release date from 2019 to to be announced earlier this year. And Metroid Prime 4, well, it as of a couple months ago, Retro Studios was still trying to put together a team for that. So I I'll, think it's going to be a minute. I'll be telling my grandchildren of when we were told we'd play <laughs> Metroid Prime 3. But it never <laughs> came. <laughs> or if it did come, it's going to come on the hardware that comes after the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll play it whenever that comes. And I'll probably play Animal Crossing too. But that still leaves a pretty sparse lineup, even if we do get Bayonetta sometime next year. And my my rampant guess before we recorded was just to give Astral Chain its due diligence in due time. I think that's one of the reasons why Bayonetta was not released in this year. That would make sense to me, because the games are kind of similar. It's it's one of those, those action story driven kind of games that you that Platinum Games is known for. But with that what else do we think could be on the table? I think, and you have agreed with me on this, we think that this may be finally, and I hope it's true, the year that we get another Mario Kart. It's time, it really is. Especially for someone like you, Matt, because now how many years have you been playing Mario Kart 8? Uh, since you since were it a came Wii out. Player. Yeah, since it came out on the Wii U, and I think that would have been 2014, so we're, we're over five years now. And the thing is, like, I bought the game and all the DLC on the Wii U, and then I doubled down and bought Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Switch. And I, I still play it, for sure, but 
I'm I'm ready for a new Mario Kart. I'm ready for some new tracks. I'm ready for some new reimagined retro tracks. I have to say, I don't know if I really want to let go of the anti-gravity mechanic because I quite like it. <laughs> I do as well. I hope that that's a mechanic that sticks around. I hope that it's a game, frankly, that we see. <laughs> my, my hope was, again, it, in the sake of not competing with itself, they wanted to give the Mario Kart Tour, the mobile game, its own fair share. And while we have our problems with that game, I will appreciate that there were definite steps taken in the art direction of that game. It seems like they're taking movement forward in the Mario Kart IP, and I'm hoping that that means we're seeing something very soon. Something that will entice people who've been playing it on their phones. The thing that I have to say about Mario Kart, and I try not to put my nose up too far in the air about this, is just that I've been so spoiled with the spectacular game that Mario Kart 8 was that that mobile game doesn't call to me. I feel like Mario Kart Tour is a game that is built for people who play games almost exclusively on their phones, and I know that we all know them. True, and it's a way, it, it's it, definitely because the the game layout is vertical. There's no reason mm -hmm. why you would make a Mario Kart game that was vertical unless you were trying to appeal to extremely casual gamers. And so for that reason, I've never... I'll, I downloaded it. Yes, I did. I played it for all of 10 or 15 minutes, but it, I really just didn't enjoy it. Like, not at all. And I definitely get you on that. I am hoping that what it does is it reminds people that Mario Kart is enjoyable to people who haven't played it in a long time. And then Nintendo drops on us, surprise, in spring, Mario Kart is coming in the summer or for the holiday season. And you know what, I think that would be a really good idea because Mario Kart, as we've learned as a system seller, look at uh, Mario Kart Wii. It still sells. It still sells. Mario Amazon Kart still Wii sells that game. It's still selling copies of it. Where? I... <laughs> it's uh, apparently as as late as at least last year, and I think this year, Amazon was still selling Mario Kart for Wii, uh, which is insane. T let, please let us know if you're buying new copies of Mario Kart Wii. We'd love to know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Let's. We should move on from Mario Kart because I think that we are going to have a more thorough discussion about some Mario Kart in the future. Certainly, I think that's our biggest guess. My other curveball, I would say maybe we would see another sci-fi racer. Maybe we could finally see the revival of F-Zero. Oh, uh, you know what? If only. The one thing that kind of concerns me about that is, you know, we were talking earlier about how Nintendo or Miyamoto had received that award in Japan for being a person of cultural merit. Um, he had kind of made a comment to the effect of uh, intending to create something, he likes to create something new um, rather than focusing too much on what's already been created. Mm -hmm. And so it makes me worry a little bit because the thing is that there are so many Nintendo IPs that have been dormant for so long that I know a lot of, uh, like a lot of the Nintendo fans like you and I really love that I worry that we may not see them again or that they're going to be extremely sparse. I know an F-Zero game is something that I have wanted for a really long time though. Those, the GX on the GameCube uh, that Sega was involved in was just spectacular, both visually and the, the sound design, the music in that game is just top notch. Yeah, I, I, I mean, another racing game would really fill out the library as far as when I scroll through my titles and I see what I've played and what's come out recently, I think some kind of Nintendo AAA racing game should come out soon. Will it come out soon? That's that's more wishful thinking. Whole other question. Um, I had mentioned to you. I think that, like, I think there's a good possibility that in 2020 we'll see an updated version of uh, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. Uh, Nintendo tends to like to do that with uh, with those games. You know, if you look at uh, Sun and Moon, they got Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon the year after, which had some minor story changes, some extra Pokemon and stuff added. Um, and given the amount of backlash that happened with Sword and Shield with the size of the Pokedex and how many Pokemon were missing, I would not put it past them to release something to the effect of an Ultra Sword or Ultra Shield with, you know, a Pokedex that maybe has another 100 or 150 Pokemon added to it to kind of appease people. You know, I certainly hope not because now we are in an age where Pokemon is a full price Nintendo title. It's no longer paying for the handheld game. It's paying for a, it, that was a cool 60 US dollars and you pay more as a Canadian. So yes. <laughs> I would, I would, that'd be a bitter pill to swallow. Certainly as far as Pokemon goes, I, I would rather see the, the marketing time being spent on some other titles, but we will see what that holds certainly. 
you know what, with the game just coming out, it's hard to tell, but we're going to find out, I think, over the next six months or so, if uh, Game Freak is going to support this game as a proper console iteration of the game, or if Pokemon is still going to be seen as, as as it was in the handheld years, you know what I mean? True, if it will move and evolve, and I'm not optimistic that it will have much in the way of a games-as-a-service type model. I don't think it will offer too much for us in that regard. I think they will occasionally change the tournament rules for online play. Those sort of things may come into account, but that's about what I expect out of it, personally. Mm -hmm. So scouring the Nintendo website, as we did today, to look for some other big studio games that are coming out in like the relatively near future, the only ones that really kind of stood out to us uh, were No More Heroes 3, which in all honesty, neither of us have played, but we know that they're quite loved by the fans, and the definitive edition of Xenoblade Chronicles. But aside from that, there wasn't a whole lot currently listed on the Nintendo website for the next like six to 12 months. And so with that, we're hoping that maybe there will be a upcoming spring Nintendo Direct or hopefully winter Nintendo Direct, frankly. I don't think we'll see anything before Christmas, but January or February, I'd love to see what the roadmap looks like for the upcoming year. <laughs> we get a little spoiled by things like the Marvel Universe where they give us this giant poster where here's where you can expect everything in the next three years and you're exactly right, Nintendo keeps the cards a little bit closer to their vest. With this roadmap that we kind of hope to maybe see a little bit more of in, uh, in maybe January or February, one thing that I kind of hope for is, you know, with Miyamoto saying, you know, he really looks for new opportunities with Nintendo's IPs and a way to provide something that's different. Well, you know, in the dying days of the Wii U, uh, we started to see Nintendo become a little bit more lax with their IPs, giving other companies an opportunity to kind of put their own spin on Nintendo's mascots with yes. games like Pokemon Tournament and Hyrule and Fire Emblem Warriors and, you know, the the really well-received Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle um, on the Switch. And then we have uh, Brace Yourself Games. Uh, they had an opportunity to get in with The Legend of Zelda, releasing Cadence of Hyrule on the Switch. Yes, which and that's a spin off. Yeah, that's particularly interesting to me. Uh, sorry to cut you off. It was a spin off of Crypt of the Necro Dancer. I, that was the first indie studio that was allowed to have intellectual properties of Nintendo. And as far as, as loosening up a little bit, that, that is pretty adventurous of Nintendo to allow them to do something like that. It's almost like when uh, Mario was part of Dance Dance Revolution, you remember that? Oh, <laughs> back in the GameCube days. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that uh, we've kind of covered the games that we wanted to talk about. We're, gonna, we're really going to have to wait until next year. I think that with Pokemon just coming out, they were kind of keeping tight-lipped because right now it's all about Pokemon, I think. Yeah. I think Nintendo's really focusing on Pokemon, but generally I think we get a direct in January that kind of gives us an idea, at least what to expect for a couple of months. And there certainly won't be lack of games being released on the Switch. We certainly have seen, as scrolling through the eShop, there's a, a bevy of titles to be released by third-party distributors, but we here are just trying to speculate on what Nintendo's going to offer us as far as the mainline series, so more to come, we're sure, as far as we uh, once we get a Nintendo Direct. But And you can bet that we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> but in the meanwhile, they seem to be moving full steam ahead as far as trying to compete with Disney. We, in 2020, will see the opening of the Super Nintendo World in Japan. And, like, there's recently been progress pictures popping up on the internet about that, and I gotta say, it, it looks real enticing. I'm gonna have to find my way there, I think. All the way to Japan? It might be easier to wait until it opens up in North America. <laughs> that's, you know what, that's very true. Because I think there are plans to eventually open one in Orlando. Orlando, at the and at... I've also heard through the grapevine there's construction beginning in the, in the California version of Universal. I could be incorrect in that, and we'll have to fact check that in a moment. Oh, I'll have to hop on a plane and come and see you. <laughs> it's very far away, but we'll take an odyssey to Super Nintendo World years from now, whenever that happens. We're you know what sounds good? 2023 or 24. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'll take a break from the sunny beaches of Canada and come see you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and with this, like, it seems like they are branching out into a whole slew of things at once because uh, you had told me that they're working with Illumination Studios of Minions fame on an untitled Mario Brothers movie. And then if we look to 
the our more recent times here detective pikachu came out last year or this year and who saw that coming i can't i don't know where that came from. not who saw it coming not only that but who saw it actually being an enjoyable movie i just finally watched that last week and found it quite delightful i have yet to watch it i really should make some time for that but yeah it's the 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 kind of theme of the movie was a lot different than I than I would have expected based on the friends that I had that have seen the movie. So yeah, it's going to be interesting to see like if the Mario Brothers movie takes off, you know, where else are they going to go from there? Are we going to get a Zelda movie? Is Link going to talk or is he just going to be a mute through the movie? And if, uh, if Metroid gets a movie, who's going to play Samus? Make sure you let us know in the comments. I'm curious to know what people think. <laughs> well, I think what you're getting at is is that this is something we could kind of anticipate from a while ago that these are characters that have become so ingrained into our pop culture. Mario Brothers is about to have its 35th anniversary. These That's are bananas. characters that have been around our entire lives. And think about pop culture and movies and, and all of these things. In the world that we live in, the amount of time and money that goes into developing large AAA titles like really rivals that the kind that goes into movies these days. It's really quite amazing the following that video games have have gotten over time, you know? And I don't think that people saw this coming when they were developing these characters initially. I don't think that people thought that when developing 8-bit characters, versions of Samus, that she would one day become, as I think in some circles you could argue, she's as iconic as Ripley of the Alien franchise. I, I would absolutely agree with that. There were rumors flying around, I think, almost a decade ago about a Metroid movie and that Cameron Diaz was slated to play Samus. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's, <laughs> movies, movies, just like video games, have come so far, even in the last 10 years, in terms of the kind of production that they give us, that I think that we're kind of now entering the time where it's right to do these things, and I think that you could do them justice, because, like, let's talk about the Mario Brothers movie from the late 80s or early 90s, and 93. the travesty. 93. 93, and, and the travesty that was that movie. We don't, we didn't need any more of that. Oh, no, we certainly don't, and we're a couple years off from the animated Super Mario movie, but in the hands of Illumination Studio, um, quick fun fact for you, uh, this is probably not going to remain true for very long. Frozen 2 just came out, but Minions was the number two highest grossing film of all time. So, uh, animated film, excuse me. Highest grossing animated film of all time. So it grossed over a billion dollars. They really know what they're doing there. Yeah, I think that we have a lot to be excited about going forward. As lovers of video games and more specifically Nintendo, we definitely get caught up in the rumor mill of the internet. We love a lot of the decisions Nintendo makes, while at the same time hold some strong opinions about the things that we don't. Nintendo's a company that's constantly evolving and changing the way that they do things. Sometimes it works out great, and other times it's definitely to their detriment. All that being said, we remain positive that Nintendo will continue to delight us, regardless of the direction they choose. So, what do you think about what we've discussed today? Hardware, software, and the world of entertainment. What do you hope to see from the House of Mario in the next year or two? We definitely want to know, so share your opinions in the comments section below, or message us on Twitter or Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. For more nerdy content, please make sure to click that subscribe button. As always, we hope you leave this video ready to pick up a paintbrush, a pro controller, or a pen. I'm Backrolls. And I'm Mac Fraser. And this has been the Nintendo Nerds.